So judging by the bright yellow luster of this asteroid, I'm pretty sure... Oops, I'll just stop my engines so that you can hear me. It looks like a core asteroid, so I'm going to move in and have a look a bit closer. Right there in front you can see an asteroid fissure, so I'm now 100% sure this is a core asteroid, so let's see what it is. So that's absolutely perfect, because it's exactly what I was looking for. It's a Musgravite, Musgravite asteroid. So it's now time to switch to the seismic charge launcher and I'm going to select the asteroid fissures. I'm going to need to make good use of my vertical and lateral thrusters to maneuver my way around the asteroid. So the first thing I'm going to do is select an asteroid fissure. If you look it will say it's high strength. So as I as I charge up my seismic launcher, you'll see that there's three zones that I'm charging it up to. With this being a high strength one, I'm going to charge it right up to the third one, like so, and release that, into, release that into the fissure. Now I'm going, going to find my next fissure. So this one is average strength, so I will only charge the launcher up to the second charging zone, like so. And if you look at the top right hand corner, you'll see that the detonation yield is getting close to the blue zone, and that's where we're aiming for, but I do have a limited time to finish all of this. If I fire too many charges, or I charge them up too much, then I will exceed the optimum detonation yield, and I will get a poor yield. So I'm trying to keep it within that blue zone. So this is a low strength, so I'm only going to charge up into the first zone. So, getting very close now to the optimum yield. This one's an average strength, but because I'm so close to the optimum yield, I'm only going to charge up into the low zone. So, that's exceeded the optimum yield, so I'm going to disable that charge. And try again. So this one's an average strength. I'm going to give it a very low charge to make sure I don't see. And that's about right. Close enough. So now I'm going to select my abrasion blaster and I'm also going to launch my collector limpets you may well rather use more limpets than this you may find it more efficient it probably would be but I'm settling for free on this current build at the time being so the first thing I'm going to look for all of the loose chunks and pick them up first so let's see where they are, there's some over there. So I'm going to my comms menu and just looking down and selecting... Selecting them. Oops, sorry, I'll just go to the right menu.
can also use your scanner. Cluster of them grouped together there. So I'm just going to wait for my limpets to pick those up. If I had more limpets, this would be faster. So I have sacrificed some limpets for some for increased cargo space. So now the majority of the loose chunks have been collected. I'm now looking for the surface deposits. There's one right in front of me, so I've got my abrasion blaster selected and I'm just gonna fire at that and break it off. And let's look for the rest of them. So here's another. And again, you can go to your comms menu and seek them out that way. I can see. Whoops! I can see one that's closer. clumsy like you can see that I clearly am, you may want to engineer your shields to make sure they can withstand the odd collision. And that's the last of them. So I look at my cargo hold now. And that's a nice 16 units of muscovite. So that will fetch a good price. If I'm lucky, I might be able to get 900,000 credits approximately per unit. But it's more likely to be around 700,000, which is definitely not to be snorted at. So that was a bit of muscovite mining with Commander Giles Farnaby. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. And happy mining, everyone.